Good morning, fish heads. Jen Cravassi from Jekyll Baits, and guess what time it is? It is time, probably overdue, for a spray session. Now, today we're going to try and knock out a couple of uh, birds with one stone, as it were, and answer the top four most frequently asked questions in the last 30 days. Um, you guys have been really submitting some excellent questions and I appreciate that. I, I love all y'all on the channel, so thank you guys so much for your patronage. It means more than you know, and uh, I make every effort that I possibly can to get all of your questions answered. Now, some of them, I do answer all of my questions uh, as timely as I can, but some of the questions is just easier to show you guys than it is to reply in, uh, in uh, a written text. So, these are going to be the top four from the last 30 days. The number one most frequently asked question that I've had how do you clear coat a gill through popper? So we're going to be pairing that with another most frequently asked question. Can you paint a patriotic lure? Uh, red, white, and blue, United States of America. And this is my 10 second, please go vote on Tuesday. Veterans Day is coming up. You're an American citizen. Please exercise your right. So voice your opinion. Not left, not right, not anything, but use it. If you can vote, go vote. It's important, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So please go vote. But we're going to do a red, white, and blue, more suited to this time of year. Now, you wouldn't think that November is a popper time of the year, but we can make some pretty cool patterns. So that's what's going to happen on this particular bait. The other two questions are going to be answered with this combination. The, f the question that I get asked a lot is, how do you reproduce the crappie pattern? Um, there's a couple of ways. For this specific one, we're going to be using a pre-cut stencil. This is from Art Tools. Um, all that stuff is below. Unless you're doing your own stencils, if you guys are at that point in your career or venture or hobby, um, then by all means press your own. But this is a, a pre-cut stencil from Art Tools. I also use the hard form stencils, and they come in two sizes. I'll show them both off to you. I use them quite frequently for 2.5s. Now these are fit to form, so these were made specifically for square bills. In the 1.5 and the 2.5, these came from Jonas Summers at Lure Color Studios. Um, we will link all of this stuff for you guys in the description below. Um, so visit him. Uh, Cedar Run also sells them, so Andrew, make sure you guys give them a look and very easy. Now I think there's a couple of different variations that they can do. I don't know how many different lures that they can stencil for, but I know that they can do it for square bills. I know that they can do it for things like wiggle warts and some other specific baits. So check them out online at uh, Cedar Run and also Lure Color Studio for your hard formed pre-cut stencils. But for this one we're going to be using that pre-cut that I just showed you from Art Tools. We're going to be using it on the last question that's most frequently asked in the last 30 days, which goes along with dipping. So obviously this is going to include the dipping process in this video, but how do you dip and hang or dry the clear coat on a lipless bait? So for this video, we're going to be using a big fat Domeki trimmer. It's an 80. This is a really awesome, I love Domeki stuff. There's a lot of really good lipless stuff out there. Um, just had a chance to paint some of the new Jackals, the disc knockers, the 70s. Those look amazing. So I haven't tested those, but I've heard some really good stuff about it. They sound great. This Domeki trimmer is a silent. Um, if you guys watch YouTube fishing vids, you know that Cornell does a lot of fishing in clear clean water. So we're constantly going back and forth about a good silent lipless. Well this is one of them. So we're going to paint this in a crappie intended for clear water. Um, one of the things that we're going to do with this because it's got a lot of flash, not necessarily holographic, but you can kind of see some holographic in it. We're going to, because this is a black dark blue, we're not going to do much with this. We're going to intend to leave this alone. We're going to do a little bit of green up top. We're going to hide that shad dot. And we're also going to put the crappie pattern and a little bit of yellow around this belly area. So we're going to do a really kick-ass crappie on this. We're going to do a really cool patriotic on this. Now it's not going to be stars and stripes. I'm not going to put a flag on this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to accent this bait in such a way to where it makes sense for this type of allure, which is a popper. It's going to be a surface bait. 
So I'm excited about this. Clearly, you guys can tell that I've had coffee. We're going to have more throughout the show. Stay tuned. Grab some popcorn. If it's breakfast time, make some pancakes, and let's make some lures. <laughs> Finish taking this part here. This isn't going to take too much longer. Just about got it. I always want to take the hooks off. You want to take this top eyelet off. I'm going to leave the eyes on in this particular bait. Damiki is one of those companies that really makes every effort to keep those eyes on. So I know from previous attempts that these eyes are in there real well. So we're just going to leave them alone because we really don't want to mess up that socket around there. And if you if you dig into it with a knife or if you're trying to use your needle nose pliers or your split rings, you really stand a chance of scraping or scratching or denting this area around the eye. So we're just going to leave it be. We're going to spray over that. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to make some really cool stuff on this today. It's a great bait. Okay, the first bait that we're going to take care of and knock out this morning is going to be this lipless. And uh, so we're going to do minimalistic things to this because it's already got a really cool holographic wrap that's internal. It's not sprayed or painted over or wrapped around the bait. This is actually inside the pressing of the mold. Um, and then it goes up to a black, but we have a little bit of dark blue. We're going to convert that into kind of like a moss green and a tropical green. Um, we're going to keep the eyes black. Or the other thing that I can do with eyes, when you have a bait that really has those eyes glued in well and you don't want to mess with the sockets or screw that up, a lot of the times you can actually put little pieces of tape in there or what I've done in the past, especially with the whopper ploppers, those river to sea whopper ploppers, I don't mess with the eyes on those either. Because um, what you'll find is when you dig that out, it messes up the backing that says river to sea and then inevitably somebody's going to be like, oh, you used a fake whopper plopper. No, that's not it at all. But you can take a little, after your paint, you can do a heat set on your entire bait, take a little bit of paint cleaner, and then just rub it gently across your eye. And that paint, even if it's a couple layers thick, will come off of there. And maybe if you guys want to see that, maybe that's what we'll do with this today, so that we get back to that clear, big pupil, silver lined, crappy eye, which I think this is going to look really sharp on once it's done. We have this stencil. We've got some wicked colors, the moss green, which I've added a little bit of gold splash to, and we're going to actually kind of tent gold into this. We've got some opaque that I've got set up. I really want to use just a little bit of pearl white, not a whole lot. And then we have a little bit of yellow. Let's see, I think we're going to use some pearlized pineapple for this. Everything else is pretty much shaken up. And then, I don't know if you can hear this, the last video that I had this large thing out on, I did not have it in there, but uh, on the Brotherhood page, Michael Ornstein has the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting, and it's a really good page on Facebook. But one of the guys was talking about um, they had some metal BBs or large balls, roller balls, um, in their paint to mix it up, and they were seeing that some of the some of the stuff they were using was starting to rust a little bit and change the integrity and the color of the paint. Brilliance. I forget which one of you guys said that, but marbles, the glass marbles that you get at the toy store or at Walmart or in the crafts section. So I put a couple of those in there. Fantastic. Love it. So brilliant, brilliant concept. Very simple. Thanks for that tip. So if you guys are on Facebook and you have a, an account with Facebook, I highly recommend going to check out Michael and Garcia's Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting. I will leave a link in the description below. I'm going to add just a little bit, just a little, to the bottom of this. Not much, but we do need to kind of get that, that crappie appearance. So we want to add a little bit of white to it. 
but this is a pearl white, so it's still going to be very transparent to see through this. And that's it. The rest of what's in here is going to go onto the top and sides of this popper. So we can pretty much kill two birds with one stone there too, and we're all about that this morning, obviously. So that is our pearl white. We're going to add a little bit of pearlized pineapple to the belly of this. I'm going to pull that down to about 30. Just a little bit. You guys can see I'm just barely doing pulling this onto the not necessarily the throat area. That's it for that. It's not a whole lot in there, so we're just going to burn that off in the chamber. Not literally, but also going to use just a tiny bit of a tangerine. This is also pearlized. And we're going to be consistent. There we go. Going to be consistent with keeping pearlized colors on this bait. Now I told you earlier I've got a little bit of gold in this moss green. Something I always like to add into my moss green. Just kind of accents it real nice. And as you can tell, we did not add any base coat opaque white to this because I want to try and keep it as uh, as holographic, you can still see a little bit of that pop underneath that, and uh, realistic as I can. That holographic is under there. Um, it's a transparent bait to begin with, and crappie are thin fish, so I wouldn't say that they're clear on the bottom, but they're certainly a lot lighter. And it's also going to make our our black crappie stand out a lot more. So that is pretty much it. We have a darker top in that moss green and because we had a dark accent underneath of that that kind of was a deep midnight blue or indigo blue that faded all the way up now you really can't see that but you can certainly still see the holographic shimmer underneath of that which is why we use transparent baits in some circumstances and we've got a really good start to this bait we're going to heat set that i'm going to clean this chamber out and we're going to add in our opaque black and we're going to make that crappie pattern The other thing that's uh, pretty neat about leaving it transparent when you get that under the light that you can certainly see that the Trimmer 80 still shows. So that helps validate that this is a real name brand bait. And as I say all the time, I prefer to use and repaint re uh, the brands nine times out of ten. It's got to be a really good blank and that's I'll, you're only going to see good blanks that are proven on this channel. We've got the heat set on both sides of this. Next thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking this Art Tools pre-cut stencil overlay and we're going to be adding it in and adding the crappie markings and accents into this bait. I'm going to put this on its side and my pressure is down around 10 right now. I've pulled it from 30 down to 10 and you don't want to overspray this but in the same respect you want to make sure that these crappie markings are apparent. Now, as a crappie, most of the markings come behind this gill plate, um, so we're going to try and be as, as natural as possible on this bait. And the first ones that I'm going to spray are right up here where the original shad dot. And you can still kind of see the shad dot, but once we're done with the, uh, the marking, So there you go, and you can really see that start to take shape. Doesn't take long on this, and you really don't need a hole. You don't want to overspray your crappie markings. One thing that you don't want to do. One thing that you do want to be mindful of, and you can see that I use this. I always talk about having a little paper towel or something to dab that. Paper towels are good because they're absorbent. So just having one taped down into whatever workstation you're using is always a good idea. 
but as you work around this bait you want to try and make sure that you're not sticking this onto something that you've just painted so you want to be a little bit mindful of that and then just kind of work through to the end of this bait maybe just a little bit more down towards the belly here on the bottom not too much maybe turn it this way lipless are fairly easy to work with maybe turn it this way there we go okay and got that that crappie pattern going that should do it just a little bit more down here just to be consistent along the bottom now because we do have a little bit of top area you can do one of two things you can continue the crappie markings which we're going to do here or you could just accent it black hit that one time come over to the other side dab this off and do the same thing come behind that gill plate lay down your stencil and again you want to try and make sure that you're not spraying over or laying this down onto an area that you have wet paint already and then just kind of come up and finish that hit that one time come up into the top back And you have your basic crappie pattern and it's fairly accurate darken these eyes in a little bit and the only reason we're doing that because we're going to pull that off remember i said i'm just going to get a little bit of accent around these eyes okay the last thing that i'm going to do because you notice that i did leave not just the gill plate but there's a little bit of extra that's uh, molded in this particular lure one thing that I notice about the crappie pattern and if you look up there if you guys can see that there's a pretty prominent side fin that does show now it is clear and you can see the the pattern behind it but for this bait what I want to do I have a little area here that I have cut out notched out in one of my cross stencils that I've made and we're just gonna put that side fin as an accent just a real light spray just hit the edges make sure you got paint coming out a little bit darker there okay and that is going to give you almost a transparent side fin and you notice we put it right at this one line in this mold press so when we come over to the other side we know that we can do it right there you always want to have mark points so that you know how to reproduce it on the other side and that'll keep you consistent that'll just make it look a little bit more professional so you want to see where that is you want to come down just a little bit and there you have it now you've got them on both sides you've got that accent there you've got the this dark area up top and that's pretty much your bait it's a fairly simple pattern I would rate it uh, 1 to 10 I would rate this a 3 maybe a 4 because you are using some stenciling but now we're going to heat set this quick I'm not going to heat set the eyes per se but I'm going to heat set the rest of this then we're going to use this add just a little bit of cleaning solution and get those eyes back in 
the solution that I've got loaded in here this morning is the same that I've been using for the last couple months. And I got to tell you, um, there was an overstock sale at Amazon on this Awada 32 ounce. Um, you can also find it at Michael's, but you have to buy bulk. You have to buy like 12 of them. If you don't want to buy 12, you just want to buy one. Then the best price that I've still been able to find is uh, right right on Amazon. I think it's like 11. It's, it's normally a, like a $20 purchase. Um, and I think the Michaels, your minimum purchase is 12, but it's it works out to be like seven dollars and 49 cents, which is fantastic. But your minimal cost out of pocket is going to be around a hundred dollars for that. So as you can see, we're starting to use that clear and get this bait back just like it was. And it takes just a little bit of effort because you have to get through your paint coats. But it will come out. And it'll come out looking pretty good. You can leave it black if you want. But for these eyes, crappie eyes are silver by nature. So you want to try and pull that out if you can. You don't want to load it with too much of the cleaner because what will happen is it'll have a tendency to mush up the paint on your baits. And then once you have that silver, you can see that that eye is back pretty much to normal. Make sure this is as low as possible, just a little bit, and then just bring that accent back in around the edge. Real low pressure. And there you go. You're still going to have that holographic pop in there. Just to show you that this is very transparent still, which is what you want. Silent bait, clear water. There you go. I'm just cutting a couple of sections off here. You want these sections long enough to where you can put this down into the KBS solution that you're using. And a shorter section as your drip wire. Now on this particular bait, the tail eyelet is on the bottom of the lure. Some of them are not that way. Um, KBDs are pretty good with that. What's not is there's a particular lipless bait that comes out of Schultz where the hanger is in a little bit and also on the Spro Arukus. Do I even have a Spro Aruku to show you guys? I do not. I apologize. I think I'm fresh out. I usually keep some in stock. Um, but that is inset. Pretty much what you're going to do with those, just as a demonstration, is that you want to hang the bait like this so that it's going to drip off and you'll have a little bit of settle around the bottom of this because I think the, uh, the hanger on these is just about three millimeters in from where this current one is and then you're also going to want to hang it in such a way where you get a hang like this and this is a little bit shorter so instead of hanging straight up and down it's going to tilt just a little bit and that's going to help that drain off. You might have a little bit of residue to clean up at the end of it, but not near as much as you would as if you tried to, to spin this out. So these are pretty easy. I just cut these. This is a, it's picture hanging wire, and I believe that this is a 18 gauge. I get it for about four bucks for a roll of 100 feet. There are thereabouts, 110 feet on some of it. And I just take my pliers and bend that back just like those Christmas ornament hangers that you guys use. Paper clips work as well too. These are a little bit thicker and uh, it's fairly easy to bend them. So as you can see we're just adding that in. I'm going to crimp this so that I can kind of move it to my will and then bend it up like this. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom so that you can see already it's not going to stick to this it's fairly hard and stands on its own since I've crimped it. So crimping is important. You don't want to crimp it too tight and move your eyelet. You don't want to bend the eyelet. But you do want this to, to be kind of rigid. 
and do the same thing with the bottom portion. Now the bottom portion on the Domeki's are a little bit easier because this eyelet right here is turned sideways. So it's a much easier way to go with this. So we have that. We're still going to bend it up though. And take your hangers, hold it like that, and then just bend that up. Okay. The only other thing that you want to do is twist this around a little bit to where both of these are going to hang to your drip wire at the exact same place so that when you come over when you're getting ready to hang this it's going to be easy to just pop right on there and you can see how this hangs just like that so let's go ahead and dip this bait this is that KBS I get asked quite often do I thin this with anything do I use anything to keep. I use Bloxygen. You can also use, uh, what is that, the computer dust remover because um, it's pretty much just carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Not, not monoxide, that would be bad. Okay, you can see that this is now like that. Just let that come off just a little bit to the trash can and then up onto your drip wire. And you can kind of see that it's hanging at an angle that's going to make this real easy to put this tail wire into. So when you come back over here, if you don't drop it on the floor, too much coffee folks. Just run that into the eyelet and there you go. And that's how I hang a lipless. If you guys have a different method of doing it, let me know. But there is your crappie, lipless, Domeki. It's a brand name. It's going to swim really well. It's going to hang here for the rest of the day. Next will be part two, where we're going to do a popper in red, white, and blue, and then we're going to dip and clear that.